What a horrible shower. Yes, we're back in the trenches. Three years ago, I went to France to see where an ancestor had run the British sniping school during the First World War. Today, with some of Major Hesketh Pritchard's descendants, my cousins James and Harry and my son Edmund, I'm in Wales for a romp through the development of the modern rifle, guided by Andrew Venables of WMS Firearms Training. We have a Mosin Nagent rifle, and the design was perfected in uh, 1891, I believe. And the rifle that you can see was uh, in production from 1891 to 1972. Wow. An industrial production. Including, is, including the, the, the woods casing and everything like yeah, that. Yeah. This hasn't changed since before the First World War. And if you took someone in a time machine, popped them up, you handed them an iPhone, put them in a modern car or a Tesla or something, and asked them to fly a modern plane, that person would be completely stuffed. They would be 110, 11 years out of date. But if you bring someone from 1898 and you give them one of our modern bolt action rifles with a modern telescopic sight, the person will be able to look at it and think, yeah, I remember they just started developing these and the rifle, it's the same, and they'd be able to pick it up and shoot perfectly well. We are not using the Enfield 1914 pattern rifle that Hesketh Pritchard used. That's in the Imperial War Museum. But we are using rifles from the 20th century of a type he would recognise. The Russian Mosin Nagant, the Mauser M48 and the Lee Enfield No. 4. Here's Andrew loading the Mauser with an original stripper clip. So, whilst under fire from artillery, you push that in there, you put two thumbs on top and you push down. Then the magazine is loaded, you take the stripper clipper out, throw it across the battlefield, but we're saving these because they're two quid each now. That ooh comes from Helena, who promises not to talk during interviews again. So let's get down to the shooting. James and Harry are occasional shooters and neither of them have fired rifles like this before. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Good. Got one more shot, That is loud. <laughs> Thank you. Good. So the map, the, the most thing again, the most thing again is dead on, and it's shooting about nine inches high. Yeah, and it's got to be in front. That's it. Brilliant. Okay, that's fine. And just leave them like that, and then when you push the bolt forwards and down, it'll load. Looking good. No. That's, that's right, Charlie, make it look hard. <laughs> Military rifles have led the field in terms of mass production and, and, and making efficient killing machines. Civilian rifles, sporting rifles, have led the field in marksmanship. It took Hesketh Pritchard in the, in the First World War to drag the British Army screaming and kicking up from volley fire in formation, and they took people from the, the stalkers from Scotland, trained them to shoot really well, gave them telescopic sights on the rifles, zero but telescopic sights, and we started shooting back and started to drag back the situation in the trench war, where we were losing horribly to marksmen. When we had the round stuck in that rifle, I was able to actually clear the blockage we had in the rifle, okay, that weapon clear, I cleared the blockage we had in the rifle by doing this. You can't do that with modern rifles and get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> that concludes the accuracy section of the historic rifle segment. And even though Andrew is quick to cover up the groups, they're not bad at all. Now, we would not be getting our historic rifles experience without a bit of bayonet action. All these old rifles have their original bayonets. The Mosin Nagant was even regulated by Russian military law to shoot with the bayonet fitted. Bayonet face. Ah! <laughs> we need your war face, your bayonet face, your kill face. Ah! Oh, yes. And again. <laughs> we lost him. <laughs> All a bit of a historical reenactment, isn't it? Here we go then. <laughs> Visceral, really. Advance <laughs> the target! You bitch, you bitch, you bitch, you bitch, you bitch! <laughs>
To bring this up to date, we shoot a steel core cyclone in 308. The first target to get it is Herman's pumpkin head. So if you had to go out and face the enemy today, would you like one of those or one of the old ones? Oh, definitely the old one. It makes much more of a bang. They'll run away if they hear a <laughs> yeah, bang they... the other one. <laughs> the final test is a shootout between a First World War rifle and a modern sniper rifle. It's the Russian Mosin versus the Steel Core Cyclone. Andrew calls the targets and James and Harry shoot them. OK, middle row of targets, far left, figure 11. Middle row, far left, figure 11. Go! Oh, good shot with a missing again. And a good shot. Do you think great grandfather would uh, have approved of us? I he'd have, he would have approved of the effort. I think we've uh, managed to demonstrate that some of the, the Pritchard line is still flowing through us and we're putting our best foot forward. You want them to learn how to shoot quickly and well. If you spend too long on your shot, in a service situation you may end up I assume getting shot before you ever got to make your shot so speed and accuracy are in balance. And um, is, is that also true in a sporting situation? From the point of view of deer management if you just don't get the shot off well I guess you don't get supper you don't get the venison you don't get the job done you you don't consummate the hunt as it were but then again hunting is about hunting stuff you don't have to kill things. It's been fun. You are allowed to enjoy shooting. Today we were safe, but irreverent. Don't confuse reverence with safety or you will never get to heaven. WMS runs all kinds of shooting days, from historic firearms through sniper experience to long range. All the details in this film's description. Which only leaves me to say one, two, one, two, three, four. We are the boys who will stop your little game. We are the boys who will make you think again. So who do you think you are kidding, Mr. Hitler? Where do you think old England started?